questions. Question oral, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. It's been 10 years since the Beijing authoritarian government has been helping the Prime Minister, beginning with a $200,000 donation to the Trudeau Foundation and meddling in two elections to support Liberal candidates. What does the Prime Minister want to do now? He wants to strike a secret committee to investigate secretly and formulate recommendations secretly. And what happens at the committee will stay in the committee. What does the Prime Minister have to hide? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, on the contrary, we have done much to reassure Canadians about the what we're doing to counter foreign meddling in our elections. He talked about 10 years, uh, but 13 years ago it was that CSIS raised the issue of foreign meddling in our elections. My colleague was Minister of in, uh, democratic institutions at the time, and he did nothing. That's the opposite of our record in government, and we will continue to do what needs to be done. 13 years. Why have they never done anything about it? Ten years ago, the dictatorship in Beijing gave the Trudeau Foundation $200,000. They then interfered in two elections to help keep the Liberals in power. They even helped campaign for certain Liberal candidates. What's the solution now? The Prime Minister proposes a secret committee. They will do a secret investigation with secret outcomes. Mr. Speaker, this committee will follow the rule of Fight Club. First rule is no one talks about the committee. Why is the Prime Minister trying so hard to keep everything so secret? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition knows very well that our government has taken very robust measures Absolutely. to protect democratic institutions from foreign interference. Last night, the Prime Minister announced additional measures that will reassure Canadians not only, Mr. Speaker, that our democratic institutions are protected from foreign interference, but those who seek to interfere with these very institutions will be held to account. And that's something, Mr. Speaker, the previous Conservative government did absolutely nothing, nothing. about. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, I, I forgot to mention, other than the secret committee that will see secret information and uh, never actually publish any information. There will also be something called a rapporteur, a fake new position that they've invented. Rapporteur. Uh, does it come with a costume? Maybe a cape or and a sword? Is the best they can come up with a fake position doing fake work? Why is it that they're trying to cover up the truth, Mr. Speaker? The Honourable Minister for Interparliamentary Affairs. Mr. Speaker, we didn't need another reason to see that the Leader of the Opposition has never, has never taken this issue, issue seriously. Never. In never. fact, yesterday, Mr. Speaker, he said something that was shocking. When I pointed out to him that this has existed as a challenge to Canadian democratic institutions, including when he served as Minister of Democratic Reform, he said, of course, the previous Conservative government did nothing about it because it wasn't in their partisan advantage to do anything about it. Think about that, Mr. Speaker, protecting our democracy is not a partisan issue, it's a Canadian issue. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Why won't the Prime Minister stand up today and answer a question? Why is he hiding? Why won't he stand in his seat? What is he hiding from Canadians that he stands behind this substandard minister? He's been hiding this for 10 years, Mr. Speaker. Whatever it is that he's hiding, it must be bad. It must be really bad. How bad is it? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, it is the height of response, irresponsibility when talking about national security, to talk about the fact that national security should just be set aside 
uh, that we should just uh, and, and just to open up this uh, as if it could be done, Mr. Speaker. It is a, it is not something that I think is being responsible. Responsible leadership is saying that every member of this house, every single member of this house, is totally and utterly committed to protecting Canadian democracy. The assertion that anything else is true is offensive, untrue, and playing games with national security is not appropriate. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, the Prime Minister really was interested in protecting national security, he wouldn't be hiding. He'd stand up right now and answer the question. Instead, he hides behind these two stooges who protect him. Who protect him. Order! Order! On both sides, order. Order! I want to remind the honourable members two things. One, please use parliamentary language and be judicious. And two, we can't do indirectly what we can't do directly in the House. The honourable leader of the opposition from the top, I'm sure he'll use both principles in his questions. Thank you. Prime Minister he was hiding yesterday from the House. He's hiding today in the House. He's hid for the last 10 years. Once again, I want to remind the honourable members that we can't do directly what we or indirectly what we can't do directly. Now, I don't want to have to move to the next question. I'm sure the honourable member from the beginning, and he would use parliamentary judgment. The honourable leader of the opposition, Mr. Speaker, Prime Minister has been hiding this for the last ten years. Ten years ago, he found out that the Trudeau Foundation got $200,000. Over the last five years, he's had briefing after briefing warning of interference by Beijing in our elections to support him. And now he's hiding the truth behind a secret committee that will not provide public information. Whatever he's hiding, it must be bad. It must be really bad. How bad? Yeah. The Honourable Leader, uh, Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, uh, the member across, the leader of the official opposition, would know well where the Prime Minister is today. He's meeting with the President of the European Commission to talk about national security issues. Order. 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 I just want to remind me. Order. Again, I want to re remind the honourable members that there's one thing that they cannot do is, ref is refer to the, either the presence or the absence of someone in the chamber. I will let the, uh, the uh, honourable government house leader start from the top, please, and I'm sure he'll use the ju he'll be judicious in his words. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And of course, that question was asked, despite uh, you uh, saying that it was unparliamentary several times. I want to put as a matter of record. But let me say this, Mr. Speaker, and be very clear. Well, one of the things that we had as a long tradition in this country was to make sure that when we were dealing with national security, that we did not use national security as a way to play partisan politics and to grind an axe on one another. Mr. Speaker, the reality is that this issue of foreign interference has been a serious issue since uh, since well before uh, this government. It was a matter that was uh, that the, the honourable uh, that the member across was responsible for as a minister. They did not. Honorable député de la Prairie. The Honorable Member for La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, yesterday at a press conference on Chinese meddling, the Prime Minister showed that once again he hasn't understood a thing. We wanted a public inquiry. Public. He gives the job to a committee that's bound by secrecy. That's not public. That's secret. We wanted an independent investigation. Independent. The Prime Minister appoints a special rapporteur, chosen by him, answerable to him, who reports to him. There's nothing independent about that. Why does the Prime Minister refuse to set up an independent public commission of inquiry? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister was crystal clear yesterday. Since we took office, we took strong steps to counter foreign meddling in our elections. 
we also appoint are going to appoint a special rapporteur to investigate all of these issues transparently and make recommendations to the government as to the next steps that we will continue to take to reassure Canadians that our elections are free and democratic and that everyone in this place was legitimately elected by Canadians. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, what the Liberals don't get is that this is not about the opposition versus the government. It's not about one party against another. It's about public confidence in our elections. What we need to know is if the deck is already stacked, if we can't assess the integrity of our elections in a transparent way, honestly, we're in big trouble. We're straying into banana republic territory here, with all due respect for bananas. What's it going to take for them to set up a public and independent commission of inquiry? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Mr. Speaker, we share precisely the same concern that my colleague opposite expressed in terms of reassuring Canadians, as we've done since taking office, to reassure Canadians that our, our, our intelligence services are effectively uh, collecting intelligence and that we are protecting our system. Since we took office, we've taken further steps, and that's precisely what the Prime Minister announced last night as well. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. The allegations of foreign meddling are serious and disturbing, and that's why we called for a public inquiry, a committee. We want a public and independent process. Why is the Prime Minister not respecting those two criteria? The Honourable Minister. Mr. President. Mr. Speaker, I obviously appreciate the question from the leader of the NDP. We share the concern that all people here should share about the importance of strengthening our democratic institutions. That's precisely what we've done since taking office. Yesterday, the Prime Minister announced further steps, extra steps, to add to those protections. We understand the need to do this transparently and openly. And that is exactly what we will keep doing. Deputy de Burnaby Sud. If the Prime Minister really wanted to restore the confidence of Canadians, he would call a public inquiry. Yeah. Here's the situation. We've got a Conservative Party that only cares about playing political games with something as so serious as our democracy. New Democrats understand that this is serious and it's not an opportunity to play political games. That's why we demanded a public inquiry in committee. There's two criteria that we have. The process has to be independent and it has to be public. Now, will the government confirm that their process will answer questions about what the Prime Minister knew, when he knew it, and what he did about it? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, my honourable colleague values transparency, so does this government. That is why yesterday, when we announced the imminent appointment of a special rapporteur, we said that we would abide by and respect any recommendation that that individual would put forward, including up to a public inquiry. Equally, Mr. Speaker, I would remind all members of this chamber that we also announced we would commence consultations on a foreign agent registry, as well as the launch of a coordinator to fight against foreign interference. Mr. Speaker, I sincerely hope that is something that all members of this chamber are united on. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Thornhill. The Liberals and the NDP are now openly working together to cover up the truth. And yesterday, the Prime Minister kicked the can down the road by announcing that a hand-picked rapporteur is going to look into, maybe looking into, the interference. He announced that a secret committee with secret hearings will hear secret evidence and then give the Prime Minister a secret conclusion. When will he call a public inquiry and tell everybody what he's hiding? Yeah. The Honourable Minister. 
Speaker, you heard the government announce yesterday that it is our intention to appoint a special rapporteur who presents the qualifications and the experience and the knowledge to navigate and survey the options on the best next practical steps that we can take to protect our democratic institutions, including our elections. And is this truly what the Conservatives have resorted to now, denigrating the very institutions that are there to protect our democracy? Is that all they have to offer denigration? I sincerely hope not. The Honourable Member for Thornhill. It's a special rapporteur. I get it. The Liberals are blocking a public inquiry. The NDP is blocking a parliamentary inquiry. And as a result, Canadians get a secret committee to look into interference by a foreign dictatorship in our democracy. It's shameful work by the cover-up coalition. Will they commit to a truly independent and actually public inquiry to, to, to look into what the Prime Minister is hiding? Mr. Speaker, our honourable colleague keeps referring to some secret committee. I think that would be very disparaging for the women and men who serve on the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, Mr. Speaker. We set up in legislation an oversight mechanism to look at these very issues, something the previous Conservative government refused to do. Members of her party serve on that committee, Mr. Speaker. Members of all political parties represented in this House and senators, they've done good work and will continue to work with them on these important issues. The Honourable Member for Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, Beijing's foreign interference is a serious threat, a national threat. It threatens the integrity of democratic institutions, social cohesion, the economy, long-term prosperity, and fundamental rights and freedoms. But this government hasn't treated the threat seriously. It's hid behind all sorts of excuses and accusations like anti-Asian racism. Now it's hiding behind a secret committee with secret hearings, secret evidence, and secret conclusions, all controlled by the Prime Minister. When is this government going to come clean with us and with Canadians about what exactly is going on? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Speaker, my colleague knows well that this government takes the work of fighting against foreign interference very seriously. That is why we introduced Bill C-59 which would give CSIS the threat reduction measure powers that they needed to address and mitigate that risk. That's why we introduced Bill C-76 to crack down on foreign funding, which could interfere with our elections, but with the corresponding transparency to create the NCCOP, the NCIRA, all of which ensures that we can be upfront with Canadians so that we can defend our democratic institutions. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives should rise above the fray and see that this is not a partisan issue. The Honourable Member Member for Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Governor, if the government treated this threat seriously, it would listen to the advice of CSIS. CSIS has said that an effective way to counter foreign interference is through sunlight and transparency, to build resilience by informing Canadians about interference threat activities. This government's done the opposite. First, it hid behind excuses and accusations. Then it hid behind a secret committee and behind a special rapporteur. This government has been anything but transparent about this. It's burying the truth in process. Why? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Intergovernmental Affairs. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, my uh, honourable friend likes to refer to what CISA said. Let's talk about what they said in 2013, when the leader of the opposition was minister responsible for democratic institutions. They specifically warned 10 years ago, when diaspora groups in Canada are subject to clandestine and deceptive manipulation by a foreign power in order for it to garner support for its policies and values, these activities constitute a threat to the security of Canada. What did the then Conservative government do for two years? After that 2013 threat, Mr. Speaker, absolutely nothing. The Honourable Member for Mégantic-Lérable. Mr. Speaker, the cover-up continues as more and more facts are revealed in the media about the Prime Minister's inaction on the Beijing Communist regime's meddling in the elections. The Prime Minister wants to keep up the cover-up. Yesterday, he announced that a secret committee with secret hearings, secret evidence and secret findings was his big solution to this serious problem. 
this morning, Liberal members on the Procedures Committee added another layer, blocking the three opposition parties' motion to call Katie Telford. Will they have the courage to let the Prime Minister's senior advisor reveal her secrets, yes or no? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, my honourable colleague knows full well that we've been very transparent with the Procedure and House Affairs Committee. A number of ministers have appeared over the months. We've been available, as we should have been. All the officials responsible for security and intelligence services in Canada have been available. And I will have the great privilege myself of attending with the Foreign Affairs Minister, perhaps in a couple of days, to answer questions from our colleagues, as we should and we ha as we have always done. The Honourable Member for Megan Ciclerable. Mr. Speaker, what, why not bring along the uh, Prime Minister's special advisor then? A special committee with secret hearings, secret evidence, secret witnesses chosen by PMO, with secret findings. And who gets to choose which findings to make public? You'll never guess. The Prime Minister's office. And that is why we need Katie Telford to testify what uh, what she says goes to the Prime Minister. Why doesn't she come and tell us what she said at committee? The Honourable Minister. Monsieur le Président. Mr. Speaker, my colleague is whipping up a lot of indignation here, as is to be expected. But we have always been transparent with all parliamentary committees. That is the responsibility of ministers. We are accountable to our parliamentary colleagues at committee. That's exactly what we've done. And we've also made available all the senior officials from the Security and Intelligence Services, deputy ministers and so on, to answer questions. And they'd be happy to appear again at the committee's request. The Honourable Member for Trois-Rivières. Mr. Speaker, foreign meddling in our elections requires a transparent investigation. Here's the Prime Minister's idea of transparency. He's putting the investigation in the hands of the National Security Committee, whose members aren't just bound to secrecy, they're bound to perpetual secrecy, a committee that meets behind closed doors where neither the public nor parliamentarians can watch the proceedings, a committee that can't say who the witnesses are or exactly what they said, a committee whose report will inevitably be redacted. Where's the transparency in all that? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Monsieur le Président. Mr. Speaker, our government has increased the level of transparency with the creation of NASI COP and INSERA. And yesterday we announced that we're going to appoint a special rapporteur to navigate and assess all the options and make recommendations. And the government will respect that choice and the recommendations of the special rapporteur. That is how we are ex respecting the value of transparency. The Honourable Member for Trois-Rivières. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm still shivering from that answer. Mr. Speaker, we need a transparent and independent investigation. But the Prime Minister is creating a so-called independent special rapporteur, but he gets to choose who. Then that person chosen by the Prime Minister decides what to investigate, but also what not to investigate. The Prime Minister's selected special rapporteur will decide whether the Prime Minister should do more to combat foreign meddling. Mr. Speaker, this special rapporteur may well be special, but who can trust that he or she will be independent? The Honourable Minister. Monsieur le Président, le gouvernement... Mr. Speaker, the government is going to choose a special rapporteur who has all the qualifications and expertise that's needed to navigate all the options and make recommendations based on the best possible advice that can be given to the government. That is how we are going to respect the value of transparency to protect our democratic institutions and to protect our elections. The Honourable Member for Trois-Rivières. Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm, I'm getting even more goosebumps. 
Mr. Speaker, foreign meddling in our elections requires a transparent, independent, and also public investigation. We know it won't be transparent because the committee is legally bound to secrecy. It simply isn't authorized to be transparent. We know the inquiry won't be independent either because the Prime Minister personally chooses the rapporteur. So since we know the inquiry won't be transparent or independent, it obviously won't be public either. So what's the Prime Minister trying so hard to hide from the public? the Honourable Minister of uh, Interparliamentary Affairs. Mr. Speaker, my Honourable Colleague is repeating things about a secret committee. That's a committee where the bloc has membership. The, bloc, the member from the bloc will hear all the high-level appropriate information and other on this issue and other issues of national security. And the government will be sharing the reports of that committee. So this is a process that the bloc is a full participant in, among others. And this is not the only process that we've created to fight this threat. Albert Edmonton. Mr. Speaker, instead of following the advice of CSIS to provide transparency and sunlight when it comes to Beijing's election interference, the Prime Minister announced what amounts to a cover-up, a secret committee with secret evidence and secret conclusions redacted by the PMO, all to bury the truth. No transparency, no sunlight, total secrecy. What does the Prime Minister have to hide? Yeah, yeah. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, honestly, I would have thought that my colleague was paying attention to the announcement yesterday when we said we would be appointing a special rapporteur who would possess the expertise and the knowledge to put forward a recommendation up to and including a public inquiry so that we could address the very serious allegations with regards to this matter. More importantly, this government has taken concrete action to combat foreign interference with the additional powers that we've given to our national security community, but with the additional transparency so that we can be up front with Canadians. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives continue to descend into partisanship. Our government is focused on protecting our institutions and Canadians. The Honourable Member for St. Albert, Edmonton. Mr. Speaker, what the Prime Minister announced yesterday is nothing more than a smokescreen with no transparency. Indeed, the only thing that is transparent is the transparent attempt by Liberals to cover up what this yeah. Prime Minister knows here, here. about Beijing's election interference. And consistent with this, today at committee, the Liberals are filibustering yeah. to block oh, the Prime change. Minister's Chief of Staff from having to testify. Why? What is the Prime Minister so afraid of? What does he have to hide? Here, here. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, I have every reason to believe that the member opposite for the entirety of his life has fought for Canadian democracy. I would believe that he knows that I have done the same. I believe that he would know every member in this House has done the same. I believe that the member opposite would also know that foreign interference is a threat to our democracy, that the objective of any nation to interfere in our democracy is not a threat against a party or a government. It is a threat against our democracy, and that, Mr. Speaker, we are united in making sure that foreign interference is repelled. But, Mr. Speaker, national security cannot be played with, we need to deal carefully and delicately. The Honourable Member for Kildonan St. Paul. Mr. Speaker, the truth is the Prime Minister doesn't want accountability on Beijing's election interference that helped the Liberals win. He wants a secret committee with secret hearings and secret evidence and a secret conclusion, all controlled by the Prime Minister. Canadians deserve far better than this, Mr. Speaker. They deserve the truth, they deserve accountability, they deserve a true defence of our democracy. We need transparency from this government, and if they can't do it, then they should get out of the way because Conservatives will get it done. When will they call a public inquiry, Mr. Speaker? The Honourable Government House Leader. It is elections and democratic process that decides who gets out of the way, not members opposite. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, I would say that back when Justice O'Connor and Justice Iacobucci issued their reports talking about the need for parliamentarians to be able to see into every corner of government, it was the Conservatives that opposed that idea. That the secret committee that they're maligning and attacking is one of which their own members sit, where they are given the opportunity to see into every corner of government. 
where they're able to see every document that is protected by national security. I hope that the party opposite is not suggesting that we should say to our Five Eyes partners that all of our national security information should be put on display. The Honourable Member for Leeds Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. The committee that these members sit on on this side of the House are banned by the Liberals from talking about what takes place. Today, Speaker, I was at the Procedure and House Affairs Committee where the Liberals were engaged in one of their cover-up filibusters. So my question is to the Chair of that committee to find out if she will resume the committee today at 3.30 so that there can be a vote on having the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, Katie Telford, testify on what she knew and when she knew it about the foreign interference efforts. So if the chair the won't chair. stand, will the vice chair of the committee stand and tell us if that committee will resume today? Okay. The Honourable Government. One moment. I want to make sure all the rules are followed exactly correctly. Okay. The Honourable Member for Perth Wellington. Mr. Speaker, as Vice Chair of the Committee, I can confirm that after three hours of Liberal filibustering this morning over calling Katie Telford's committee to answer about the Prime Minister's and what he knew of Beijing's interference, the Chair arbitrarily suspended the meeting. I am pleased to report that the three opposition parties have agreed to provide the resources necessary to resume this meeting and finish this Liberal filibuster today. Mr. Speaker, as Vice Chair of the Committee, I am proud and able and willing to regavel the meeting to order at 3.30 if the member for Waterloo will not. Mr. Speaker, the question is, will the Liberals show up or continue the cover-up? shared its partial research findings into the horrific deaths of children at the Alberni Indian Residential School, which operated on its The Honourable Member for Courtney Alberni from the top, please. Mr. Speaker, Sashat First Nation has shared its partial research findings into the horrific deaths of children at the Alberni Indian Residential School, which operated on its lands without consent for almost 80 years. 17 suspected armed graves have been identified through ground penetrating radar. The community also confirmed at least 67 students died while at the school. The nation has made calls for truth and justice, including funding to complete this research, removal of the remaining buildings, and replace it with a healing and cultural centre. Will the Prime Minister honour the Sashat calls for truth and justice? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank, I want to thank the member for this, this important question, not only for all the survivors and families that uh, were sent to this hideous institution, but also for the communities that are going through a lot of pain and trauma trying to come to grips with, with that grim reality. Uh, this continues to shock the conscience of Canadians, and I, I have spoken to Chief Counselor Ken Watts on a number of occasions, indeed visited the community twice, uh, and have undertaken to do all we can on behalf of Canada to make sure that uh, there is some measure of healing that is, that is afforded to those survivors as well as to the community. Thank you. The Honourable Member for London, Fanshawe. Canadian brewery workers are worried. Labour unions representing them, including Unifor and SEIU, are sounding the alarm because the federal government plans to increase beer taxes by 6.3% on April 1st. This would be the largest federal beer tax increase in the last 40 years, and it's happening with no debate in Parliament. Beer production costs are soaring and sales are declining. This tax will have a huge impact on jobs in Canada. Will this government help to protect brewery jobs by cancelling this unprecedented and automatic beer tax increase? The Honourable Minister for Tourism. Mr. Speaker, we understand the work that brewers do in this country, and whether it's small craft brewers or the large producers, this is an important industry for our tourism sector, but also for Canadians for recreational purposes. Mr. Speaker, we cannot comment on what's going to be in the budget. We have heard from the brewery industry, and we are taking this matter under advisement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Yukon. 
Mr. Speaker, the inherent rights of the Métis were confirmed in the Constitution Act of 1982, and 40 years ago today, the Métis National Council was officially formed. Since its inception, the MNC have been fierce advocates for Métis across Canada. Can the Minister of Northern Affairs please update this House on the federal government's partnership with the MNC and the important work we're doing together with Métis? The Honourable Minister for Northern Affairs. Thank you for that important question. I'd like to thank the member for Yukon for all of his hard work on all of these issues. I congratulate the Métis National Council for 40 years of hard work for the rights of Métis across the homeland, building on the legacy of our ancestors. And I commend uh, Cassidy Caron uh, for her stewardship of the Council, and I also uh, commend and congratulate all of the previous presidents of the Métis National Council over the last 40 years. Our government is working hand-in-hand -hand with MNC on issues such as reconciliation, housing, the environment. There's lots of work to do, Mr. Speaker, but we are making progress. Here, here. The Honourable Member for Calgary, for Sloan. Eight years of Liberal failures, they continue to break records, just not ones many can celebrate. Not only are one in five Canadians skipping meals, but food bank usage is at a record high. A Mississauga food bank saw a 41% increase in usage, serving more than 13,000 people in January alone. That's the average attendance of an Ottawa Senators game. Why does the Prime Minister continue to brag and celebrate his failed policies that sent 1.5 million Canadians into a food bank? Or was that his plan all along? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Tourism. Mr. Speaker, we know that Canadians are going through a hard time. There's an inflationary cycle that has gripped the world. And the fact that in this country, Mr. Speaker, our inflation is lower than the average in the G7 and in the EU is not good enough for Canadians. And that's why we have a robust set of affordability measures in place, Mr. Speaker. The other side provides no hope, no plan, no vision for the future. We do. That's our job. We've got the back of Canadians. Honourable Member for Calgary, Forest Lawn. They got the back pockets of Canadians and we would never ever uh, vote for policies that made housing double. After eight years of their failures, rents and mortgages have doubled since 2015. Random Liberal Bill Morneau said that this government overspent. That made the Bank of Canada jack up its rates to counter that. And now CIBC is saying 20% of his mortgages are at a point where monthly payments don't even cover interest anymore. So will the most expensive housing minister in Canada's history. Stop patting himself on the back for a job well failed and admit that he broke housing in this country. The Honourable Minister for Sports. There's everything that has happened in Canada and in the world these past few years, including the pandemic. What we need to remember is that this government has been there for those who needed help the most. It's also important to remember that after years of a conservative government, when our government took office, we lifted one million Canadians out of poverty and we also created more jobs over the past 10 years than were created during the Conservatives' time as government. So our government has done more for the people of Canada than the Conservatives have ever or will ever done. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal Prime Minister, Canadians are struggling. Seniors are being pulled out of retirement and forced to re-enter the workforce in order to pay for food and housing costs. Grocery prices are out of control. The average rent for a two-bedroom apartment across Canadian cities is $2,000 per month, compared to $1,200 per month in 2015. Will this Prime Minister step aside and let the Conservatives fix what they've broken? The Honourable Minister for Seniors. To look at the facts. And the fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, when that party, the Conservative Party, was in power, their plan for seniors was to raise the age of retirement to 67. Mr. Speaker, first thing we did, we re reversed that back to 65. We then enhanced the old age security. We then enhanced the guaranteed income supplement. Mr. Speaker, every step of the way, the party opposite has opposed measures to support Canadians and has stopped us from doing the work for seniors. We won't take any lessons from them, and we're going to continue to make sure we deliver for seniors. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Haute-Saint-Charles. Mr. Speaker, this is the year that Canadians will feel the full impact of the Bank of Canada's 4.25% base rate hike. 
According to Statistics Canada, 35% of Canadian households reported that it had been difficult for them to meet their financial needs over the past 12 months. 44% of respondents expressed concern about their household's ability to buy a home or even pay the rent. Will the Prime Minister admit that his out-of-control spending has fueled inflation and created conditions that are impoverishing millions of Canadians? The Honest Minister of Tourism. Mr. Speaker, we have implemented so many supports through, to help people get through the pandemic, and those supports did not create inflation. No matter what the Conservatives might say with far-fetched theories, they don't have a plan for the economy. They don't have a plan for housing. They don't have a plan for climate change. They don't even believe in climate change, Mr. Speaker. On this side of the floor, Mr. Speaker, we will continue to follow our plans and policies to help Canadians. The Honourable Member for Laurentie de la Belle. Mr. Speaker, the House Procedure Committee has voted in favour of an independent public inquiry chaired by a commissioner chosen with the agreement of all parties in this House. The Bloc, the NDP and the Conservatives were able to set partisanship aside. Because what is at stake here, Mr. Speaker, is the public's confidence in their electoral system. What's at stake here is not partisanship. Does the government really believe that it can restore public confidence with a secretive committee and a reporter who reports directly to the Prime Minister? The Honourable Minister of Interparliamentary Affairs. Mr. Speaker, as I said a few moments ago, we share the same concerns as our colleagues when it comes to strengthening our democratic institutions and strengthening them against foreign interference, interference by countries including China. We have taken action. We have implemented many measures, Mr. Speaker, and we will continue to further strengthen our democratic institutions. That's exactly what Canadians expect of a responsible, transparent government like ours. The Honourable Member for Lantille la Belle. Mr. Speaker, in a democracy, People are not guaranteed to win elections, but elections do need to be conducted properly, without cheating, without money received on the sly, without voting under duress, and without foreign interference. That is what democracy is all about, Mr. Speaker. Those are the necessary conditions for us to accept the results of an election. If people lose trust in their electoral system, democracy itself is weakened. That is why we need a public and independent inquiry. Why is the Prime Minister stubbornly refusing this? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. I share the concerns and worries of my honourable colleagues. This is why we set up an independent panel which verified that the two elections in 2019 and 2021 were fair and free elections. And we will follow up on this with a process which will be led by a special reporter. The reporter will table recommendations that the government will follow. Yes, I agree, this is all very important and we will continue to protect our democratic institutions. Okanagan, Similkaming, Nicola. Mr. Speaker, CIBC is the first bank to show that on 20% of its mortgages, the monthly payment doesn't cover interest, increasing what the borrower owes on top of their original mortgage. Does the Minister of Finance agree that inevitably these higher debts must be paid down, something that borrowers can't afford now, let alone at higher costs later? And if she believes that's true, why does she continue to relentlessly borrow, borrow, borrow and spend, spend, spend when it's not only inflationary, but a debt that Canadians cannot afford today, let alone tomorrow, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, we are going to continue on our prudent fiscal track that we laid down in the fall economic statement and in Budget 2022. It's intriguing, Mr. Speaker, that the Conservatives are having a little laugh fest today because, Mr. Speaker... The Honourable Minister from the top so we can hear the whole answer, please. 
Mr. Speaker, perhaps we should go back to the past, Mr. Speaker, and talk about nine years of stagflation during the Harper government when the Canadian economy didn't grow more than 1%, maybe 1.2, and which country in the world is positioned to lead the G7? Mr. Speaker, in growth next year, Canada. Is that good enough for Canadians that are struggling with inflation? No. That's why we have affordability measures in place. They voted against them. We're voting with no Canadians. Paper. They can who and haw. We're here for Canadians. Honourable Member, First Central Okanagan, Smilkami Nicola. Mr. Speaker, Canadians aren't buying the house of debt that this minister is selling. So, uh, in, in Kelowna, we are now recognized as one of Canada's top five highest rents, and it shows. This Minister of Housing has failed to house the homeless on the streets of Kelowna. Now, with rentals and home prices doubling, there's no way that his policies can help them, let alone the middle class and those working to join it. Does this Minister understand, Mr. Speaker, that he's failed the people of Kelowna? If so, will he move out of his office today to make room for someone else, or is he waiting for an eviction notice from the Prime Minister? <laughs> The Honourable Minister for Housing. Mr. Speaker, it is really rich to hear rhetoric coming from the other side when they have voted against every single measure that we've put in place to help Canadian renters. When we put together the Canada Housing Benefit, they voted against it. When we introduced a $500 top-up payment that is going to almost 2 million Canadian renters, they not only voted against it, they, they played procedural games last fall in this House to delay payment that was going to almost 2 million Canadian renters That's to right. help them with the cost of rent. Canadians can see through their rhetoric, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Belchasse, Les Etchemins, Livy. Hello, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, after eight years under this Prime Minister, home and housing prices have skyrocketed. Successive interest rate hikes have been a blow to homeowners. The average cost of a mortgage in Canada, Mr. Speaker, has more than doubled and now averages $3,000. So people can't access property, young adults are living in their parents' basements, and there are students living in shelters. When will this Prime Minister acknowledge the problems that he caused, show some compassion, and finally help Canadians? The Honourable Minister. Help first-time homebuyers access the dream of home ownership. We're building more supply by working with municipalities and provinces to get more barriers out of the way, to build more housing across the housing spectrum. What do they do? They vote against all these measures. In addition to that, it's been a year, more than a year, since their leader uh, took, took helm of that leadership, and they don't have a housing plan. They don't have a plan in place. They don't have the voting record. When they were in government, they spent meager amounts of money. And every time that we bring measures in place to help Canadians across the housing spectrum, they vote against it. Canadians can see through that, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Laval, Les Îles. Mr. Speaker, our government has made significant efforts to recognize historical wrongdoing and to recognize the criminalization of vulnerable communities throughout Canada. Today, as part of these ongoing efforts, the government has reaffirmed its commitment towards all women and all 2SLGBTQI plus communities by making several offenses eligible for expungement. Can the Minister of Public Safety inform the House of the positive impact that this announcement will have on Canadians? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> the Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank my colleague for his question. We must recognize the historical injustices that have historically targeted vulnerable communities. That is why I announced today that body house indecency and abortion-related offenses will be eligible for expungement. These offenses have primarily affected women and members of the LGBTQI plus community. We need to also protect the right to choose and the right to safe sexual health services. Bridge. Bill C-11 is an unnecessary and grotesque overreach of government control. It censors what Canadians can see online, what they can post online, what they can hear online. The minister has said that this bill is about supporting Canadian culture. 
but that's actually not true. You see, the bill actually stifles creators. It stifles their voices. And in fact, subject matter experts have actually said that it likens Canada to countries like China or North Korea. So will the Prime Minister stop this damning overreach and kill Bill C-11? The Honourable Minister for Canadian Heritage. Well, Mr. Speaker, the, the Conservatives have an option. They could side with Canadians, they could side with our music creators, with our film producers, with our actors, but they decided to side with the tech giants, abandoning the cultural sector. That's Mr. terrible. Speaker. And that's a shame tech in giants. itself. This is another thing, Mr. Speaker. I don't think they understand the bill. I'm not even sure they read it at this moment. I don't think a they year did. After, because you read the bill, it's very clear. It's simply asking the streamers to support our culture. They understand that. Everybody understands that, but the Conservatives. Mem member for Lethbridge. I would invite the member opposite to listen to Canadians. When they came to the House of Commons and when they came to the Senate, they said the same thing over and over and over again. Creators, content experts and Canadians at large do not want this bill. It stifles their voice, it prevents Canadian culture from being furthered, and it likens us to places like North Korea and China. It's a terrible bill. It needs to be killed. Will the minister concede to Canadian voices, give them the power, and stop this terrible legislation? The Honourable Minister. Well, we have to give it to my colleague. She's very creative, which is very good in a cultural world. But if you listen to the people in, in the music sector, in the film industry, the music industry, they're all behind this. Yes. Why? Because it's asking streamers. I make a lot of money. It's fine. We're happy for them. It's just asking the streamers and Netflix, this of this world, to, con to contribute to the creation of more music from here, for more films from here, for more television. It's good for Kenyans, not for the Conservatives. Good for Kenyans. The Honourable Deputy. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Mr. Speaker. The Liberal government likes to be in control, and they showed us that once again yesterday when they created a secret committee with secret hearings and secret evidence, secret conclusions. That is total Liberal control. But that's what motivates this government. That's what motivates them with the CRTC Act that they want to amend. But you know what this government can't control? the province of Quebec's will to be heard. Quebec wants to be heard. When will the Liberal government convene the committee so that Quebec can explain its stance? The Honourable Heritage Minister. Mr. Speaker, my colleague is from the same province as me. We're both Quebecois. I don't know if he's spoken to the La Disque Federation, but La Disque supports our bill. And the Union of Artists also supports our bill. Music producers, film producers, TV, uh, TV and movie pr producers support our bill. There's a lot of support for our bill. Why, Mr. Speaker? Because it's good for Quebec's culture, it's good for Canada's culture. The Conservatives don't like it because they don't care about culture, but we care about culture, we stand up for it, and we always will, Mr. Speaker. East. Mr. Speaker, seniors around the world and in Canada were some of the hardest hit by the pandemic. Conscious of the lessons we've learned from the pandemic and given Canada's rapidly aging population, can the Minister of Seniors please update this House on the work that she is doing with Canada's international partners to advance the rights and interests of older individuals, both here at home and abroad? The Honourable Minister for Seniors. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank my colleague from St. John East for that important question and, and her for ongoing advocacy for seniors. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to inform this House that Canada this week joined the UN Open Ending Working Group on Aging. Canada will be using this opportunity to advance seniors' human rights and efforts to support seniors around the world. Canada is a global leader in supporting seniors with a robust pension plan and universal health care system, and we look forward to sharing our experience and work collabor collaboratively to improve the lives of seniors both here and around the world. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Skeena Bulkley Valley. Mr. Speaker, Prince Rupert is home to one of North America's fastest growing ports, but the city of Prince Rupert is struggling to maintain the basic infrastructure needed for a growing workforce. In December, the city declared a local state of emergency after several water main breaks, and now city officials fear the catastrophic failure of the city's water infrastructure. 
Now, the B.C. government has pledged support already, and it's written to this Minister of Infrastructure and asked for federal help. Why won't this Liberal government step up and help this city in crisis? The Honourable Minister for Interparliamentary Affairs. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank our honourable colleague for raising that important question. He and I have had a number of productive conversations about this important project. Officials of my department have spoken with the city as well. We understand, and his point is very accurate. This is a critical piece of Canada's economic infrastructure, and yet a municipal water system is dependent on a community with a population that is necessarily much more limited than the economic impact of the larger port and its infrastructure. I've had conversations with the government of British Columbia in this regard, and we hope to have good news soon. Honourable Member for North Island, Powell River. Mr. Speaker, for decades, women in the RCMP suffered a shocking amount of sexual harassment and discrimination. Now Veterans Affairs is clawing back their disability pensions. Months ago, following the Merlo Davidson lawsuit, the Ombuds recommended the clawbacks stop. But the minister has done nothing. He is making these women who serve their country suffer all over again. When will he fix this and make this right? Here, here. Well, Minister for Veterans Affairs. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate my honourable colleague's concern, and I also appreciate the Ombud and her office for providing recommendations to the government. The women who came forward and disclosed their experience in the Marilyn Davidson did so with incredible courage. We will have more to say on the recommendations made by the Ombud shortly and thank her for on behalf of the veterans and their families. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good job. Good job. I'm afraid that's all the time we have. C'est tout le temps que nous avons. It being 3.20 p.m., pursuant to order made on Monday, March 6, 2023, this House stands adjourned until tomorrow at 2 p.m., pursuant to Standing Order 24-1.